Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then the earth shall yield or increase, and God, even our God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Father, we're going through a period right now where your word has nothing but come to pass. At the ends of the earth right now, is in fear because of what is happening, O oh God. And we have been praying, Lord, and we have been seeking your face. We have been asking you to, to allow this plague to be stayed, to allow people to be healed, Lord. We, are, we so desperately want to see the end of it. But Father, O oh God, we come to you this morning because we want to do what your word says. We want to praise you. We want to lift up your holy name. Because over the years, O oh God, we have forgotten, O oh God, what it means to just lift you up. Lift you up in the midst of the earth. Lift you up among our friends. We have brought ill repute and disrespect to your name because we have done so many things. We have gone astray and we've We've just allowed your name, O oh God, to be trampled under, O oh God. When you said, Lord, let your people praise you, all your people, not just the ones who serve you, but all your people, because you have created this earth and you have created people. You created people in the image of you, Lord. And Father, you are calling upon all your people this morning to praise you, to lift up your, your holy name so that the earth will be healed and that the earth will bring forth her increase and the healing that we are seeking after and the deliverance that we are looking for, God. We want to see it come, Lord. We want to see it come, but we want to lift up your name. You said if your people who are called by your name will humble themselves and we want to humble ourselves this morning and put you back in that honor, that place of honor, oh God. We want to lift up your holy name and let the world see our God high and lift it up. And know that you are the deliverer. You are the healer. And you are the savior of this world. Not just our little area that we live in and our household. But you are the savior and the deliverer of this world. We speak deliverance to this world in the name of Jesus. And we are not going to fail to give you all the honor. And all the glory and all the praise. Because it's due only to you. In the name of Jesus. We praise you. And we honor you. Thank you Lord. Amen. Good morning to the church and to everyone who is hearing and seeing my face. And I, I hope that my message today finds you in good health, finds you well and prosperous and thriving and doing well. I want to talk to you today on a topic that I call the everyday God, the everyday God. And if you would turn with me uh, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, and we are going to be talking about verses 1 through 5. Isaiah, chapter 40, the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, the prophet, in the Old Testament, verses 1, 2, 3, Four and five, and that will be the main scripture for my talk this morning. What the Lord is saying to the church, I believe in this time, is a message of comfort and a message of hope. And Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 and 2 says, Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. Speak tenderly to the church. Speak tenderly to the church. Proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Isaiah 40 verses 1 and 2. I want you to know that God is not angry at the church. Let me repeat that. God is not angry at the church. This situation that we are in the midst of right now, this worldwide uh, virus and, and this virus infestation 
this is not happening because we did something wrong. It's not happening because the church did something wrong. It's not happening because there is sin in the church or because we didn't pray enough or because we didn't fast enough. Sometimes, you know, we labor under the misapprehension that we can somehow be good enough or holy enough or pray enough or, or do good enough works to bring about a move of God. But God is saying, this is not what's happening here. He wants you and I to be, he wants to speak comfort to the church this morning. He wants to speak tenderly to the, to the church. There are times in, in, in the history of the nation of Israel, uh, yes, and even in the history of the church, when God chastises the church, when God scolds the church, this is not one of those times. At this time, the word of the Lord is, comfort my people. I'm, I'm about to speak tenderly to you. I'm speaking to you in this, but it's a message. It's a tender message. It's a message of reconciliation. It's a message of grace in the midst of everything that's happening. God wants us, God wants to present us solely as a trophy of his grace and his grace alone. It is not by our efforts, it's not by our much prayer, it's not by our much fasting or much good works, as good as that is, and we will do that, and we must do that, and we must continue to do that. But we must not be mistaken in believing that this is going to bring about a move of God in and of itself by dint of our own efforts. It is by the grace of God. God wants to present us in the ages to come as a trophy of his grace. It is his work in us. It is his work alone in which he gets the glory. So in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 7, God says, In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. This is a time when God is expressing his kindness to the church. What this is, is the amazing grace and the unfailing love of God that is being lavished on us an unprepared and undeserving people. His grace alone. What this is, what's going on right now, saints, even though it may not look like it on, on, at first glance on the surface, it may not look like it, but what is going on right now, what this is, is an answer to the prayers of the saints. What has God done? Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 and 4. What has God done? What's, what's he in the midst of doing right now? Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 and 4. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. So what has God done? God not COVID-19, not Trump, not Charlie Baker, not some evil cabal, some anti-church cabal. God has ejected us from our church buildings. God has disrupted our routines. Yes, our routines. And, and may the Lord forgive us. God has disrupted our routines. 
God has discomforted us. God has wrong-footed us. He has unnerved us, unsettled us, and in effect said, now let, let, let me see, let you, let everyone see, let the world see, let, let prove to yourself, prove what is it that you're all about. We have been ejected from our churches, from our church buildings. We have been discomforted. We have been wrong-footed. We've been unbalanced. Our familiar patterns and our familiar surroundings have been snatched away from us in an instant. But what God has not done is that he has not removed Jesus. He's not taken Jesus away from us. You know, one of my favorite worship songs of all time is... The Heart of Worship by Matt Redman. And, and those of you who belong to MMCC would know that that's one of my favorite worship songs. And I try to get it in, in the worship set as often as possible. And it, and it goes something like this. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come. And then in the end he says, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. The one thing that has not changed and that cannot change, that will not change, is that we have Jesus. No matter what we do not have, no matter where we are, no matter where we have church or where church has been forced to be right now, we have the one being, the one who makes church, church, we have Jesus. When all is stripped away, it is all about Jesus. And now we are being challenged to prepare a way where there is no way. We are being challenged to thrive in inhospitable and challenging circumstances. We are being challenged right now to find a way to fill in the valleys, to find a way to level the hills, to find a way to make the rough smooth and to make the rugged plain. We are being challenged to find a way, find a way to disciple the flock, find a way to do our works of service, find a way to do our charitable works, find a way to care for the sick, for the elderly, for the poor and the underserved. Find a way to be the church unleashed without our familiar surroundings. I tell you the truth, that we have not seen such innovation and creativity in the church unleashed in the church within such a compressed time frame with all as we have now and all with the purpose of living out the gospel and bringing glory to the name of Jesus. We have not seen this kind of innovation in this short time frame ever in the life of the church not that not in my lifetime in any case the church has left the building and we're not going back in let me repeat that the church has left the building and we're not ever going back in even when we go back into our buildings we are not going back in we will never again be defined or confined by a building, by a building complex, by a campus. Never again will the church go back to being in a building. Think about it. If God had not laid us out, we would have had to have a 20 or 30 year theological debate 
about the appropriate use of the latest technological innovations. I tell you the truth. I, for one, have gla I I'm glad that we've skipped that stage. We've saved ourselves a lot of ink. We're just going to go ahead and do church and we can argue about it later. We're just going to go ahead and do church. We don't have a choice if we are church. My friends, we have to do church, whatever the circumstances. What will be the result of what God is doing right now? Well, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Do you know what this worldwide crisis is about? It's about the glory of God. Does that sound familiar to you, church? It should sound familiar because that is what we have been praying for. For generations. And especially on Cape Cod for these Lo, these last 15 years, we have been praying for the glory of God to be unleashed upon the church and upon the world in an unprecedented way. A way that we have not seen before. A move of God happens when we least expect it and in a manner that we have not yet seen. It is God who decides, not us. It is God who decides to cause the wind of his spirit to stir and to blow up such a storm that all people will see it together. It is God who decides. This is a new day. And I believe that going forward, as we bring church into the future as we as we wrestle with this new paradigm and find ways to lift up and glorify the name of Jesus find ways to bring glory to God in the midst of all circumstances i believe that two new realities will emerge that won't change Number one is that there will be unprecedented levels of collaboration between churches. Let, let me tell you what I've seen since we got ejected from our buildings. Let me tell you what I've seen. I've seen churches offering to share their production facilities. Huh? I've seen pastors encouraging each other. I, 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 I could name names. I, I can't tell you how many pastors have reached out to me personally with a word of encouragement. But, but it, it, it is so beautiful to, to see and to experience. And I myself have seen pastors uh, who, who, are, who are negotiating our new reality, I myself have encouraged them and I myself have taken pattern from some of the things that I've seen. It's a new day. It's a new reality. I, I heard one of my pastor friends said, it's a reset. So there will be unprecedented levels of collaboration. Do you know that there are churches right in our area, who have said, you know, if you're experiencing difficulty, come talk to us. The era of inter-church jealousy, I'm declaring it to be over. The era of inter-church jealousy is over and the era of the glory of God 
over Cape Cod has begun. The Lord has unleashed the church and has un, un we, we are now unlimited in the scope of the ministry that we can offer because we are no longer tied to a building. The second reality that I believe will not change is unprecedented dedication. Dedication. You see, the Sunday Jesus that was the reality for too many of our brothers and sisters, too many of our church attenders, the reality of their Christian experience was a Sunday Jesus. And for some reason, the Sunday Jesus has become the everyday God in all the churches. We have learned, we are learning to call on God every day and in all circumstances for everything. And that is what God desired all along. And look at the way he has gotten it done. If, 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 if some preacher, some pastor, or some minister, or some bishop had come to a meeting of the churches on Cape Cod, let's say had come to the Thrive Conference and, say, and said, you churches need to close your buildings for four weeks, for six weeks, for two months. We would have stoned him. We would have run him out of there. And he would have been lucky to escape without injury. But look at what God has done. I tell you, it's the church unleashed. Is there anything that we won't contemplate in service of God? Is there anything that we won't consider doing to lift up the name of Jesus? Nothing. Nothing. We're out of the building. And we ain't going back. This is what Jesus wanted all along for our church. He said, I will be sanctified before all the people, Leviticus 10, 3, and I will be glorified. Father, may the name of Jesus be lifted up. May the name of Jesus be exalted to the highest place in the eyes, not only of the church, but in the eyes of all the people let Jesus Christ be lifted up and glorified let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth in church as it is in heaven be glorified in our midst as we go forward from here in Jesus' name, amen.